now our next topic of discussion is the gas gangrene so for gas gangrene they will give you a clinical scenario and there will be uh, most commonly there will be a history of the road traffic accident and there will be uh, foul smelling discharge plus uh, from the wound plus there will be crepitus once they uh, write this word crepitus in the question then you have to be sure that it is gas gangrene nothing else okay so once you see this crepitus word there then you have to be sure that this is nothing but the they are asking about the gas gangrene so gas gangrene will be asked as a clinical based clinical scenario based question and you have to be very careful for the gas gangrene okay so now coming to the causative organism first you have to see uh, the most common causative agent of the gas gangrene although gas gangrene is a multibacterial or multi pathogenic uh, you know uh, condition uh, one single bacteria cannot cause this gas gangrene always in the gas gangrene multiple bacteria are involved but the most common bacteria is the clostridium perfringens so we have to know about this clostridium perfringens the some of the features of the clostridium perfringens so features of the clostridium perfringens or which was in, initially or uh, you know earlier called as clostridium welchi so the important features of this clostridium perfringens are the gram positive bacilli it is a gram positive bacilli it has a subterminal spore what is the meaning of subterminal so meaning of subterminal is just uh, just below the level of the terminus so if you divide this bacteria into two half this is the center of the bacteria and this is the terminal part of the bacteria so you see that just uh, terminal to the bacteria just term uh, you know just away from the or just below the terminal point of the bacteria you see this spore there okay so that means it is a subterminal spore then it is a bulging spore that means its diameter is more than the diameter of the bacteria it will bulge out from the bacteria okay so it is a bulging spore and it is a obligate in a rope it is a obligate in a rope so these are the four most important characteristic of this clostridium perfringens one should must remember these four characteristics okay now coming to the causative agents as i have talked uh, earlier as well that the gas gangrene is not a single pathogenic condition i mean this is not caused by a single pathogen rather it is caused by a group of pathogens so we have whenever you are asked the causative agent of a gas gangrene you have to write it in two uh, headings one is the established agents and other one is the probable agents you never know that whether the, there is established agent or the probable agent so you have to write about both of them these three will be must these three are present always but these three are probably present so you cannot be sure about them that's why you have to write both the established agents as well as the probable agents now how can you remember this established agent and the probable agent so the established agents are the clostridium perfringens clostridium novi and the clostridium septicum you can remember it with the mnemonic pns okay pns what is the meaning of pns pns means p for perfringens and for novi and s for septicum pns means one more thing that is paranasal sinuses you must have read in the anatomy about the paranasal sinuses in the uh, skull so by that PNS you can remember the established agents you know that the PNS will always be present in every person so similarly here this PNS will be present in all cases of the gas gangrenes okay so by that you can remember this uh, established agents now coming to the probable agents so probable agents are the bifermentins the sporogens the uh, clostridium phallax and the histolyticum these are the four probable agents how can you remember these so this can be remembered with bsf okay see here bsf bsf b for bifermentins s for sporogens and f for phallax f for phallax and bsf hai you see na bsf hai hamare iske acha ke liye so similarly h for histolyticum so bsf hai hamari सुरक्षा के लिए सो प्रोबेबल एजेंट्स आर बाई बी फोर बाई फर्मेंटेंस एज फॉर स्पोरोजेंस एफ फॉर फैलेक्स एंड हैव फॉर हिस्टोलाइटिकम नाउ कमिंग टू द पैथोजेनेसिस ऑफ दिस 
gas gangrene the pathogenesis is very important for this uh, gas gangrene this is in uh, very commonly asked question if they ask you the gas gangrene or if you give you if they give you the clinical scenario of the gas gangrene they will must they will must be asking the uh, pathogenesis okay it is must for them to ask this pathogenesis because this, this is very important and sometimes it is asked as individual question as well for about 10 marks or for about uh, uh, 5 marks so now coming to the pathogenesis so pathogenesis involves any lacerated wound which is most commonly seen with the road traffic accidents okay so any lacerated wounds or open fractures produced after a road traffic accident or any other injury this is the risk factor for the gas gangrene occurrence so there will be road traffic accident or there will be any other injury which is causing the lacerated wound or the open fracture now whenever this happens whenever this happens then there is contamination of uh, contamination of the end, that wound with the spores of the clostridia you know that uh, uh, the clostridium is present in abundant amount in the soil in the water in the air and all so these spores very easily get uh, entry into the wound because they are abundantly present in the soil and once there will be rta there will be open fracture or the lacerated wound the soil will uh, the soil will contaminate the wound it is very obvious that the soil soil will contaminate the wound because soil is present everywhere on the roads on the sides of the roads everywhere so it is very obvious that the soil soil will contaminate the wound and by that contamination the spores will enter inside the wound so once the these spores enter in the wound there is also entry of some aerobic organisms so these spores are anaerobic but some aerobic organisms also enter inside the wound because bacteria are everywhere so due to the growth of now these bank aerobic organisms grow there you know that aer aerobic uh, organisms need o2 so they will very uh, easily grow there in the uh, lacerated wound because they will get the nutrition from that lacerated wound and will get the oxygen from the environment so they will very easily grow so there is growth of the aerobic organism and uh, one is very conservative method of of the body that it reduces the blood supply to the injury site to uh, reduce the blood loss so due to this reduction in the um, blood supply to the injury site plus there is growth of the aerobic organisms these two points due to these two points what happens the oxygen level at that site of injury reduces and as there is reduced oxygen level that is causing the redox potential to be reduced so the redox potential is is also reduced due to that growth of the aerobic organisms plus the reduced blood supply this is very important point this should must be mentioned in the while writing the pathogenesis that the redox potential is reduced now that redox potential is very important for the growth of the anaerobic organisms because they do not need o2 and they even cannot grow in the presence of o2 that's why this reduced potential or the absence of o2 is very important for their growth so these reduced redox potential what causes it causes the favors the growth of the anaerobic organisms and till now they were in the spore state now they are they get converted into the vegetative state okay now they get converted to the vegetative state and once they uh, get into their vegetative state what happens is that uh, so wait so once they enter inside uh, once they become their uh, i mean once they gain their vegetative state in the vegetative state they will grow they will grow and multiply and produce the toxins and the enzymes obviously when they will be multiplying they must have have to produce the uh, toxins and the enzymes for their growth so they produce the toxins and the enzymes now out of all the toxins the alpha toxin is very important and this alpha toxin has got the phospholipase c activity plus the enzymes which is produces include the collagenase and the hyaluronidase which causes the spread of the toxic how because the basement membrane and all the uh, connective tissues are made of the collagen and the hyaluronic acid and these all glycose amino glycans so once these enzymes are released they will cause dissolution of that co collagen or the hyaluronic acid and the toxin can easily spread to the distant areas so they help in the spread of the toxin well uh, alpha 
uh, alpha toxin which is produced that has the phospholipid C activity and we know that the phospholipid is maximally present in the cell wall of the I mean sorry in the cell membrane of the cells so it causes uh, destruction of that phospholipids and the permeability of the cells increases that leads to increased amount of cell death so uh, that is how these toxins and the toxins and the enzymes are causing destruction at the site now since uh, the clostridium perfringens is a sacrolytic uh, bacteria that means it breaks down the saccharides not the proteins okay so uh, it utilizes the sugar tissues you know that the muscles has the sugar the glycogen and all uh, very uh, you know large amount of glycogen is stored in the muscle as well so and the also some glucose and all are also stored in the uh, muscle so that um, that sugar or that saccharides are utilized by these bacteria and once they utilize that bacteria for their feeding uh, they produce the gases so these bacteria while utilizing the uh, saccharides the sugars they produce gases now that gases what happens to those gases is that these gases get collected these gases get collected uh, beneath the skin and that causes the crepitus this is the pathogenesis behind the crepitus okay these crepitus are black colored uh, you know black colored soft swellings uh, filled with gases okay so these crepitus are formed by the collection of gases which are produced by the utilization of the sacrolytes by the uh, the pathogens by the uh, clostridium bacteria so this crepitus which compresses vessels now this crepitus once there has been formation of this crepitus on the skin then the underlying blood vessels will be compressed now with that uh, with that crepitus so once it will be compressing the blood vessels the uh, blood supply will further be compromised okay so the blood supply will further be compromised that's why it further enters into a vicious cycle like this it further it it is further reducing the blood supply so it further reduces the redox potential at that injury site and there is occurs further damage or further growth of the further multiplication of the clostridium bacteria and this vicious cycle continues and will be continuing if it is uh, not treated promptly so this is the pathogenesis and this pathogenesis is very important of the gas gangrene once you must remember this pathogenesis and this is very important very easy as well okay so this is all about the first part of the gas gangrene next we will see the lab diagnosis of the gas gangrene